Do you ever feel confused or anxious just staring at your screen feeling paralyzed? You've watched all sorts of educational videos, you've learned all the strategies, and you can easily spot the perfect trade in hindsight, but when it comes time to do it in the live market, you freeze. You're overwhelmed with all of the concepts you've learned, but you have high hopes and dreams of using them to become a successful trader and make life-changing money like you see others doing on social media. Well, today I'm going to solve all of that for you for good. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jesse, and in the last seven years I've spent in the markets, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars trading both prop firms and personally funded accounts. But before I was consistently profitable, I struggled with the same exact problems that many of you are dealing with right now. But if I knew then what I'm about to share with you in this video, I would have been able to change my life much, much quicker. I'm about to share a simple and easy three-step system to trading that will give you confidence in the live market, and I'm gonna give you a specific entry model that will work if you use this strategy exactly as I teach it in this video. So please make sure to not cut any corners, and if you implement this into your trading, you will never hesitate again. But enough of the chit chat, let's hop on a chart. We're about to go over a full three-step system on what liquidity you should expect a reversal from and what liquidity you should expect the market to push through. And this is very important, not only for bias, but for entry. So I'm also going to be giving you a step-by-step -step entry model that you can use to be profitable and to become funded. But before we go over this, I want to go over why this is important. Okay. So, you know, if we're trading and we are looking at the market and the perspective of ICT or SMC, liquidity is what everything is based on right the whole idea of this game is that we see manipulation right we take out people's stop losses and this is where we want to enter the market right um, but the thing that most traders have problems with is they can't figure out what liquidity is going to give a reversal and what liquidity is going to get pushed through and then we're going to see a continuation right um, and this is a very very important thing that you have to learn if you ever want to be successful trading ict now, another concept that I want to be very clear on is that if we don't have a raid, we have no trade, meaning if liquidity isn't taken, then you should never be trading, right? So the whole essence of what we're doing is trying to track, you know, the algorithm or smart money or whatever you want to call it. And whatever that thing is, right? The idea is that it is coming down to take out liquidity before the real move happens, right? That is the essence of ICT. So if the algorithm you're trying to trade with or the smart money you're trying to trade with doesn't trade until liquidity is taken, then if there's no raid, then there's no trade for you either. You have to think like a market maker. How do we spot the correct liquidity and not become liquidity ourselves? And in this video, I'm going to give you a very simple and easy three-step system on how to do exactly that. So step one is going to be manipulation versus displacement, okay? And this is how you're going to be able to tell where we are going to have a reversal or we're going to continue. The most important aspect of ICT that got me to where I'm at and helped me become profitable and make a lot of money from trading was displacement, right? Because before displacement, you have all this structure and you're really not sure of what to pay attention to because, you know, the market is taking a high or maybe it's taking a low or maybe it's taking a high. And this happens all the time. And a lot of the time you won't see the market continue, right? So how do we know which market structure to watch, which liquidity to watch? And really, how do we know how to get our bias in where the market is going to go, right? So look, any ICT veteran will tell you that displacement is the key footprint in the market that smart money leaves behind, okay? This is one of the most important things that you can ever learn, so I want you to pay very close attention. So displacement is just going to be a big push in the market. Now, the problem that most people have with displacement is, you know, maybe one man's displacement is not the next man's displacement, okay? And it's people look at it in a more subjective way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve that for you for good and give you an easy and mechanical way to do this. So in order to get a mechanical way of finding displacement, I'm going to share with you a two-step system that I like to call algorithmic analysis. Part one of algorithmic analysis is that we're going to look at our daily chart for bias. We want to look at the most recent impulse, right? Impulse is very important. We don't want to just look at, you know, the craziest structure from all the way back here to here. We want to look at the most recent impulse, right? Where is the market going right now? So we have a high right here that pushes with displacement, meaning a big move through these lows. Okay. So now we have our most recent impulse and we're going to mark out this range. So now what we're going to do is make sure to ask ourselves, where are we? Are we in premium or are we in discount? Okay. In this example, you are in premium. And not only that, you also have traded into this fair value gap over here. Okay. So when we are in a premium and you're trading into higher time frame levels, you're going to be looking for signs to sell, right? That's going to bring us right into step two or part two of algorithmic analysis, which is going to be to identify one hour or 15 minute liquidity. And you have to think like the market maker, right? If we're bullish, buy under lows. And if we're bearish, sell above highs. 
So thinking like a market maker, we have came into a premium of this daily range and we tapped into that daily fair value gap and took out a lot of low time frame liquidity. So now what we're going to be watching for again is to sell above highs, right? Because if bearish, sell above highs. You have to think like a market maker. If the market makers or the algorithm or whatever you want to call it is looking to sell in a premium, then they're going to need liquidity to do so. So you're going to be watching price above any highs, right? But that sounds like it can get a little bit much. And that's why that can. So the next step in this strategy is I'm going to teach you how to refine this so that you're not looking at every single high or low and not over trading, which brings us right into step two, which is time. And what we're going to be looking for is for if we're trading London, you're going to be looking for liquidity raids that happen between 1.30 and 4.30 a.m. Eastern time. And if you're trading New York, you're going to be looking from 7.30 to 10.30 Eastern time. Okay. The raids that happen during these times of day are going to be the ones that are likely to yield reversals, right? Going into manipulation and displacement. One thing that I want to show you guys is that when the market pushes through a high or a low, right? Like this, we push through a high or a low. The market is likely to continue, okay? Um, when the market comes down into fair value gaps on that time frame, the market's likely to continue to the most recent high, right? But if we're bearish, we know to not look for a continuation of this over time, right? So we're just waiting if we're bearish to see the first time we pop above a high and then we start to fail to displace, meaning the candle does not have a rapid move through it. Now the candle could even close through, like for example, you see right here, this candle closed through this low, but it still did not displace through the low and that's why we got a reversal. So anytime you see the market not pushing through a low like this, right? then you would expect a reversal and you would look for the market to trade to the nearest high, right? So if we are looking at the market in this sense right here, where we look at what happened through that high, the market pushed up rapidly. So we're going to expect the market to eventually continue up to this high. Now, I want you guys to go back and test this on your charts. It is actually amazing how consistent this is. Um, and you can use this on the one hour, the five minute, the 15 minute, the one minute, whatever you want to use it on, but just make sure you're using it in context of your higher time frame bias. Okay. Because if you don't, you can become a pattern trader, which is what happens to a lot of ICT guys. Um, they just want to learn the easy, simple stuff. Um, and in reality, daily bias is pretty simple too, but people just want to look at the low time frame. So make sure that what you're doing is agreeing with your higher time frame. For example, you know, if you're in a discount of a bearish range down here and the market starts displacing to the upside, well, that right there is your signal that we're trading up into this premium now. So you can have a bullish bias and look for bullish market maker models or other bullish signs like this, another displacement, the market coming down, it failing to displace under these lows, right? So if you're looking at the market as it's likely to trade to a premium, any kind of price action like that, where we're failing to displace under lows during the right time. Now notice what time that is. It's at 9 a.m., right? What are the times we said? Remember, 7.30 to 10.30 for trade in New York, okay? So if we see that happen, right, those failures to displace during those times, that can give us a draw on liquidity of the most recent high, okay? Um, in this example, um, if we're looking at the market now, we've came into the premium of this range and it's 10 a.m. We're seeing the market pop up above that level and it fails to displace. So we know the market is likely to trade lower. OK, so and as I said, this works on any time frame. But what I want you to focus on for this specific strategy is our daily bias and then watching liquidity on the 15 minute or the one hour and then waiting for it to be taken during the times we specified. So this brings us right into step three, which is going to be putting it all together and how to use this as an entry model, okay? So there are two entry models. One of these you can just use on your higher time frame. okay? So before we get into this, I want you to make sure to download the free PDF guide that I left for you down in the description. Make sure to click that, download the free PDF, because it is a lot easier to have a step-by-step -step visual open when you're actually trading than to try to come back and watch this video a bunch of times. You really only need to watch this once and the PDF that I made will be your guiding light and it'll have some more value for you guys in there that that way you can actually trade with this knowledge and not just watch the video. Okay. Very important. You do that. So getting into step three, you know, you want to make sure that you have this rule, just like we said, if a high doesn't do its job or a low doesn't do its job, it's to be targeted. So for example, um, if this right here, like, let's say we look at the market right here, this high push the market down and it failed to do its job, right? Because the high's job is to push the market down and make a new low. Think of it like that. But in this example, the market failed to displace. So that high didn't do its job. So all through these candles, you're looking at this as a draw on liquidity, right? You are looking at 
the market in the sense that if the market displaces through a higher low, it's going to continue. If it doesn't displace, then it's going to reverse to the most recent opposing structure. Okay. This can give you a very, very good draw on liquidity system. It can give you a very good entry model as well. Now, if you have the combination like right here where the market failed to displace and then it displaces through that high, then you can look for the most obvious area of liquidity, which is going to be farther up ahead like this. Um, these are going to be the highest probability scenarios of this strategy. But I want you to go back before you use this and test this on your charts and just watch how easy this actually is and how well it works. Now, another thing that I want to make sure that I am very clear on is that don't get scared when the market makes these big pushes into a low. Because remember, at some time, this candle didn't look like this. It didn't have a wick. It was a big body pushing through this. So wait for candle closes. Make sure to use your bias to not get scared out of positions or, or scared every time the market pushes through a high or a low. Because a lot of times it's going to reverse, especially if it's during those times and it's agreeing with your daily bias or if it's trading into some kind of higher time frame level like a fair value gap. So the first part of the entry model, which is going to be the three candle strategy, okay? This is going to be your higher time frame entry, and you don't even need to go down to any other time frame besides this. Now, what we can do right here is you can literally just wait for this failure to displace, wait for that candle to close, put a stop loss at the bottom of that candle, and then target out the most recent liquidity. But if you notice in this example, we don't really have a good risk to reward, right? So with this strategy, you want to have a minimum two to one risk to reward, okay? So in the event that this doesn't give us a trade, what we can then do is go into the lower time frames. So now that we're looking at the five minute, I just want to be clear, the target stays the same, right? What you're waiting on is the market to dip under this low right here, and then you're waiting on this shift in structure, and then you want the market to trade down into a fair value gap, okay? So again, just to kind of visualize that, the market pushed up really hard right here, that's going to give you your market structure shift. So you're, the market's telling you that it's these stops are being bought up. If you don't understand market structure, I have a free video on that. Uh, I go over that. It's in this playlist that this video is in. I don't want to go over it too much for the sake of time in this video. So what you would do is wait for that market structure shift, and then you would enter the trade on the fair value gap retracement. And what that's going to do is, if you notice, that gives you your two to one risk to reward. Now, this is on the five minute. You probably could have gone the one minute and maybe even got a better entry. Um, and another thing that's nice about this strategy is once you have your draw on liquidity, and this is very important, guys. Let's say you miss the first perfect entry. Well, your target still hasn't changed until the market trades lower. So let's say right here, the market shifts up and it gives you another possible entry right in here, that fair value gap. That's another trade, okay? You can still take that trade, guys. That's something that I see a lot of people struggling with is they feel like they missed the first move and then they just missed everything. Uh, the beauty of, of having a good strategy is once you have your drawn liquidity, you're just picking a, a spot to get in, okay? You're just picking something that has good enough risk to reward for you to enter the market because the idea still hasn't changed. So very valuable lesson on that for you guys. So in that example, we're looking at the market is likely to trade higher because the market was in a bearish range, but we're trading up to a premium, right? The market has told us here, it's told us here that it's reaching up towards this premium, okay? So if you made it this far, I want to thank you for watching and ask you to subscribe for more simple strategies like this. This video is the third part in a five-part free course series that gives you everything you need to be successful with ICT. Also, remember to download that PDF because that's going to help you to kind of just drill this into your mind and have it in front of you while you're trading. So I want you guys to always remember as well that the game of trading is not won by watching 100 videos and mastering every single strategy on the internet. It is won by implementing one simple strategy that is easy to spot and easy to execute, okay? The less friction that you have in the market, the less stress you will have, and the more successful you will be. When I realized this and I started implementing this strategy, it was the biggest aha moment in all of my career, and I finally saw the markets clearly and began to execute confidently. So I'm excited to see how many of you are able to do the same and see the same success with this strategy. So if you have any questions, please comment them down below. And again, make sure to download the free PDF so you can study this and actually use it while you're trading. Again, the link is in the description below. It will say free PDF. You click that link and that is how you get the PDF. And again, this is the third part in a series which I'm doing everything you need in order to become a successful trader. The first two videos should be on your screen right now. And always remember that if you can't see the liquidity, then you are the liquidity.